all right in here. Last of the falling tide. All the tarpon you'd ever want. They're rolling all over the place here. I got them rolling right next to the boat. So you say to yourself, then what the heck are you doing out there, Dave? How come you're not fishing for tarpon? Because you know why? I don't want one. I don't want to mess with them. It's a brutality that I don't feel like putting up with right now. So what am I doing? I'm out here on a Monday morning. This is the first morning of Hurricane Ida hitting Louisiana, the great state of Louisiana, the holy land of all inshore and offshore fishing. And I'm, of course, Captain Dave Sport Fishing in Jacksonville, Florida. But I have a love for Louisiana, and I feel for those people out there. I would love to live there myself. I just don't think I'd ever own anything. Maybe a piece of land, as I always say, with a single wide thrown on it. So when it blows away, so be it. Go get another one. But my goal today is I'm at the inlet, Mayport Jetties. I'm going to try to catch these itsy bitsy little tiny croakers that my customers catch constantly. And I go, my God, would that be great for gator trout bait. So that is what I'm going to try to do today. I'm all by myself. It's a Monday morning, southeast 10 to 15. So I'm going to see if I can catch some little tiny croakers, put them in the live well, take them up the river, and feed them to a gator trout. First candidate, and that is about perfect right there. I'll even take smaller. My oh God, the tarpon are absolutely busting everywhere out here. But that's always the problem. They're like eating little things this big. So, there you go. That's a trout McNugget. A gator trout McNugget. The whole idea about using these croakers in Northeast Florida for monster gator trout is the fact that you're going to put them someplace probably where they don't belong. And the reason for all this, the water's hot and the bait stealers are through the roof, so it's very difficult to get a nice live shrimp in front of a giant trout. Just a giant trout. Everybody and their brother wants to eat it. You could use mullet, you could use pogies, you could use a lot of things. But, for me, these little tiny croakers have caught, let's say, seven, eight pounders, back to back. Um, I've got other videos where I've caught a five, six, and a seven, I believe, all in one spot on live croakers. I've only got so much falling tide here. And falling tide is what I want. There's all kinds of fish busting out here. And there's Spanish mackerelis on the gotcha plug. But I'm gonna let them go. See, they're eating those little minnows. Got another one. Fall Spanish mackerel. Nobody even thinks about it. I've come out here in the fall and turned and burned on the hardware, the planers and spoons. They caught tons of them. Ooh, this one. This might not be a Spanish. This might be my Jack Crow Crovallis. Oh yeah. Look at that ugly stick. Yep, Jack Creval. All right, here we go. And I need to get out my pliers. Well, I got six croakers. And then I felt like doing this. Casting the old gotcha plug for fun. 
My favorite lure of all time, the gotcha plug. Well, there's my croakers. They're not as small as I wish they were, but this ain't the Gulf Coast where you get perfect three inches. So here goes the first one. Let's see what happens. That's the reason I use them right there. Well, the tide's not doing what I want. The very, very, very weak tide today. I want some serious current movement and I'm not getting it. But I got the eight foot croaker strokers here with the Daiwa Ryogas on them. And that's so I can make a long bomb with a big bait. All right, let's see what happens. Fish on. I don't know what it is, but it ate a croaker. It ate a croaker. Oh, it's a drag burner. It's a drag burner. That didn't take long. This croaker was out for about five minutes. See, I'll see it in a second here. It's an enormous trout. I'm done. I'm done. I can go home. I got my one over 20 in five minutes. I'm done. I'd say I got my one over 20 inches, folks. Not as big as I wanted, but it ate a croaker. Look at the hook. Can you see the hook in its mouth? It was burning drag. That's what big trout do. Big trout. It's coming right out here, right out above the hinge. Right when you think there ain't no big trout behind your boat, let me tell you something. They're out there, they just need the right bait. 25 and a quarter. 25 and a quarter. Now, this is many times a real waiting game. It wasn't today. I'm watching my other rod. These rods, eight foot tiger stick, absolutely perfect for croaker fish and giant, giant trout. That rod tip went and the drag started peeling out. That right there, has no problem eating a big croaker. No problem at all. All right, let's see how much he weighs. So who wants to go trophy trout fishing? Now you're only allowed one of those. So this is a almost a one and done kind of deal, or you're gonna maybe pick up a big bull red. So I'd say that fish is maybe six. Uh, Traveler Bob knows because we did this before and he had like a seven and an eight pounder and then a uh, a what was it I think like a 30 pound red we had multiple reds hooked up that day I got a video all about it all right okay let's see here Ah, uh, five and a half. Five and a half pounder. I'll eat it. I'll take it. In the heat of August. And let's see what time it is. 
it's absolutely dead low right now, 9.30. And I left at, I don't know, quarter to seven or 6.30. Spent some time out there catching them, catching those uh, croakers and caught a couple uh, Spanish and Jack. You only allowed one over 20 inches, so this is how I do it. All right, I'm going in. You know, that's the problem. I want to get those croakers. You got to do that really early and really fast because as soon as the heat pours on, and the heat is pouring on right now, there ain't a stitch of wind. Time to go make the donut. All done fish cleaning. And all I did was bump this finger against my knife. I bumped it and sliced the tip of my finger open. How stupid is that?